वेलकम एवरीवन टू जी मैट ब्रेक थ्रू पार्ट वन द स्लीपी सिंड्रोम बेसिकली लेट्स फर्स्ट डिफाइन व्हाट द स्लीपी सिंड्रोम इज स्लीपी सिंड्रोम इज द कंडीशन व्हेन यू आर अस्लीप एंड यू गेट अ फोन कॉल और योर ब्लैकबेरी और योर आईफोन रिंग्स अप देर इज अ मैसेज फ्रॉम समबडी देर इज एन ई मेल वॉट यू रियली वॉन्ट टू डू इज you don't want to read the full email you don't want to you know think a lot while talking to someone i mean it's an important call but how do you know how critical it is if it's not critical you don't want to think about it right why don't you want to think about it because ultimately you want to sleep if you start thinking about it i mean you may lose sleep right so that same laziness that same kind of laziness should be you know applied to your gmat uh, test taking and that is what will uh, help you get a breakthrough ultimately i mean what you really want to do is you want to be lazy on the gmat and that's a big statement you may say why do i want to be lazy on the gmat i don't want to be lazy yes you do i mean here's why if you just take the test simply solving each and every question fully and completely okay you will lose time you will also lose a lot of points i mean if you want to do that that's great But if i were you i wouldn't do that right so what do we really want to do what we really want for ourselves our techniques which i am going to give you and strategies which i am going to provide to help solve questions more easily and more uh smoothly right that's what i want to do that's what i want you to do okay so now we know what we want to do right this is what we want to do so let's see now that you have the overview how are you going to do it okay first of all forget about forget about the official or an official study material everyone's out there to profit from your preparation except you because if you just use certain study materials they get a part of the deal you pay them they are happy but are you really improving that is the question so let's let's answer that question are you really improving do you really improve when i mean people go through all the materials in the world they study a lot they work really hard but they still don't make it why don't they make it they should be able to do it right so i mean so let's get to the business end of this let's break through let's find out a way for improving for making our lives easier for not having to solve the questions really but just you know have the techniques having the techniques that really help us so let's 
first go to uh, I mean what you really want to do is one research in the area you want to improve in for example if I wanted to improve improve in RC or uh, let's say primary purpose questions I would go and find something I'll go and find everything related to that topic on forums on YouTube in books etc right you research first you find out all right I want to improve in primary purpose questions what are the people doing what are other people doing what are what are, what are their strategies forums provide a lot of strategies that books do not and videos provide a lot of strategies that uh, forums do not and books provide a lot of strategies that people do not apply but they are really good so I mean whatever works for test the strategies or methodologies to find out which techniques take you the least time while solving a problem so in our case the example that I have given you find out the fastest easiest way to solve primary to answer primary purpose questions without having to work hard that is the approach this hey wait a minute and the third thing that you do now this third thing is once you test the strategies find out what is working for you you actually apply the strategies to practice questions and practice tests I mean really if you find the easiest fastest way to do it you are already done so this is a general overview so right these are the three steps if you do it like this you will never have trouble okay all right so let's move on to now actual application of this uh, I'll give you some examples and you can see that they are really helpful right let's talk about RC when we come to RC let's talk about what we were just talking about right um, primary purpose questions so how do you answer primary purpose questions well there are so many ways when I let's say I, I went to a forum and I found technique number one which was read the whole passage and then go through the answer choices right find out which one you know intuitively seems to be the right choice okay works for a lot of guys may not work for you may work for you 
टेक्निक नंबर टू एंड क्वेश्चन यू टेक नोट एंड हैव योर समरीज प्रिपेयर फॉर ईच पैराग्राफ ओके and then you just uh look at all the summaries and see what the general uh you know theme is that theme is your passage uh passage which is primary purpose okay great does that work for you maybe maybe not then we go and we find out another technique technique number 3 says all right what i want to do is i read the passage just once and i don't care what sort of a question comes right i read just the passage just once i you know get the gist of it this should be in every case like till this point you don't do anything i mean this is generally what you should be doing in rc you should be reading the passage and getting a gist of it once you do that when it comes to our specific problem of this primary purpose uh you use process of elimination okay so what you really want to do is you take a look at each answer choice choice and go back to the passage the passage if you have to and just check whether the passage whether the answer choice really does cover the whole passage you know so there will be a lot of answer choices that won't cover a lot of ground all right there will be a lot of answer choices which will i mean you will observe they don't cover the whole uh, passage they just cover one aspect of it okay there are others which are just completely you know not relevant so finally whatever you do that gets uh, reflected in your answer choice right so what you need to do is use this technique technique number 3 is the fastest technique why do you want to you know keep going back to the paragraph whatever it is whatever we used let's see you see technique number 1 says read the whole passage then go through the answer choices and find out which intuitively well first of all intuition won't help you okay it will actually hurt your score and technique number 2 take notes and have your summaries prepared first of all taking notes will waste your time and then you just look at the summaries and you try to collate maybe there is a general theme but maybe somehow one theme is more you know impressive than the others one paragraph actually is sits on your mind and it influences your answer uh, your ability to choose an answer so technique number 2 doesn't really work and it wastes a lot of time so one and two will waste your time or they'll not help you get the score technique number 3 really works for you okay 
it works for you. You just read the passage once, get the gist of it, then you use process of elimination. By process of elimination, you're just looking at, is this relevant? Does this really apply to anything beyond paragraph 1 or paragraph number 2 or paragraph number 3? Okay, and you find out and you solve the questions. That's it. Right? So that is all about applying this, you know, the sleepy syndrome technique to RC. Now let's move on to an SC example. I mean, why do you need this? I mean, when you look at parallelism and uh, comparison, okay, this is an important topic. So let's see what we are looking for. Uh, we are looking for a general, generalized technique we can apply to all the B and C questions. This is right parallelism and comparison questions. We want to do this and nothing more. So let's find out. You know what 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 really are parallelism or, or comparison parallelisms are something of the sort I mean what you kind of understand right? and see these this may be a right sort of a parallelism then a comma b and c this is wrong because of the comma missing then what else uh, when the same thing kind of goes for comparisons when you talk about comparisons, you are actually looking at, you know, you are looking at, is this thing an orange? Yes, it is. Is this thing an orange? Yes, it is. Is this thing an orange? Yes, it is. So, you know, oranges are being compared, so this is correct. And is this thing an orange? Uh, yes, it is. Or is this, is this thing orange? No, it's not. Right? And is this thing or in yes it is so I mean everything is not the same so it's a wrong comparison I mean that is the general sense right that's what you are trying to do so let's see where you are okay. so this is the general uh, kind of way that you approach parallelism and comparisons okay the technique to solve this like I said you know there is one technique technique number one says you know what let's look at this if this is something like ing this is something like ing and something like ing okay so this is correct but uh, in a lot of cases that's incorrect right we're not going to delve deeper into this we're just saying okay this technique going from left to right does not work it is incorrect why is it incorrect well because parallelism works left to right let me write that down parallelism works left right to left not left to right so how how do we determine that let's take an example joe went to the salon to or uh, let's not send him to the salon let's send him to the grocery store joe went to the grocery store okay and he bought twenty apples. Okay. And next answer no, that's next choices. Joe went to the grocery store and bought twenty apples. Okay, 
next joe went to the grocery store and was buying apples when i met him okay all right so which one is correct which one is incorrect let's look at the first one if you uh, if you are a left to right guy right this will look correct okay this will also look correct okay but and joe went to the grocery store and was buying apples when i met him also is correct right all three are correct i mean some may be awkward don't look at the awkwardness just look at does it sound correct yes it does so it sounds correct so it's correct right but that's not the case let's just understand what limitations what limiting factors are there when it comes to parallelism every time you look at a comma you look at and you look at or right these are limiting factors so anything after these anything after a comma anything after an and anything after an or that actually determines the parallel structure okay so here the right to left one so here and he bought 20 apples right so there is a subject the subject does something and what 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 does he do there's there's an object right apple so this is the structure here parallelism is all about that we look at this is this the structure yes he bought this and joe went so the this is correct right so this is in fact correct both ways right or left uh, whether you look at it from left to right or right to left right so this is correct let's put it as there okay let's look at this one joe went to the grocery store and bought 20 apples okay you know what this is i mean when you talk talk uh, or you write this may seem correct right but to the left left to right guy this seems joe went to the grocery store and bought 20 apples um, seems correct may be correct you may have some doubts if, if i put, try to put in doubts in your mind you will have doubt but um, so but the truth is the correct technique is you look at and and you say okay bought 20 apples is that the same thing yes went to the grocery store right so this seems correct right okay then we move on to the next one we will not write whether it's correct or incorrect right now right so then we look at this joe went to the grocery store and was buying apples when i met him okay and left to right guy even may have doubts but the right to the left guy already knows that it's wrong why that and was buying apples is there something was something something no it's not right so that's not parallel even if there had been was buying this joe had gone to this uh, to the grocery store and was buying apples that would have worked but that's not the case so we know conclusively that this is incorrect now we come to the last one when we uh, do the second one joe went to the grocery store and bought 20 apples right went to the store bought apples is this correct well this is actually correct you may have some doubts because you may think okay when i look at this it's not correct but look at this and bought apples went to the grocery store correct right so this is what you need to be looking out for the comma the and and the or this is what parallelism is uh, this is what what is what the uh, what drives parallelism what drives comparisons 
of course when you look at comparisons you also see is he really comparing you know comparable things but beyond that this i mean a lot of people make the same mistake that uh, you may have made when you look when looking at these answer choices so always remember this technique right this is the fastest technique that you can think of how did we find it we were being lazy and that's how we found it right okay so now let's move on um again when we look at cr questions uh let's pick up assumption questions when you look at assumption questions do you really like get a sense that you are doing really well on assumption questions or are you if if you're not doing well let's look at assumption uh approaches to assumption questions right what are the different approaches one way to solve these questions then is okay let's call it technique number 1 technique okay what is that how techniques so technique number 1 says okay when i look at assumption question what i do is i read the argument find out a you know the premise or premises in many cases i look at the conclusion and right and then i try to predict the miss missing link very good good technique works a lot of times right technique number 2 i mean what you need to uh, look uh, here and understand is that not every time you will find you know 3 4 5 techniques maybe there are just two so like here what we'll do is you read the argument or you start off With, by reading the question and then you go to the argument whatever works for you right and you i mean you understand again you do this find out you don't have to find out the this this thing but you just look okay you don't try to predict the missing link I mean, what is what it is doing is, and then answer the question. Right? So here, in, in technique number two, you read the argument, you find out PNC. You don't predict anything. You don't try to you know bang your head against the wall. It wastes time. What you do is, you look at the answer choices, and you, you know, negate the answer choices. This is a popular technique. It's on all the forums. and uh, well, depends on who you are talking to but this is the answer uh, this is the technique that actually works what you what negation means is let's say answer choice a says a has been to paris okay let's look at this let's write a story line or something uh when a a is suspected of um stealing an impressive painting from the what was that let's say the vatican right right on march 5th march 5th so um a is 
someone had given a description of the thief which matched A's but A was still no, not called in for questioning let's just say he wasn't even called in for questioning or I mean he was let, let off or whatever you want to say right so so what are we missing here I mean, you know? was in Paris on the 5th of March A was in uh, no wasn't even on the same continent wasn't even in Europe on the 5th of March let's just keep these because these alone so when you negate what you do is if it says A was in Paris you say okay A let's let me say A wasn't in Paris so what so what I mean what happens if A wasn't in Paris you know something was stolen from the Vatican if A wasn't in Paris on the 5th of March okay does that really impact my uh, argument okay. no it doesn't you know it may seem to be doing that if I say A was in Paris on the 5th of March you know that actually you know eliminates this thing how could somebody steal from the Vatican or could have flown there I mean I don't know let's not assume a lot of things for assumption but if A wasn't in Paris let's say what would happen nothing would happen nothing would happen right let's just say now A wasn't even in Europe on the 5th of March okay what if A was in Europe Let's, uh, let's just say A was in Europe on the fifth one. Does that impact? Yes, it does, kind of. So now what do we do? It kind of impacts. Now A wasn't in the Vatican on the 5th of March okay yes or let's write it as kind of if I do a reverse A was in the Vatican then I mean assuming that that is the only thing then yes it does affect the answer choice if, if I say uh, the argument if I say A was in Vatican and A is suspected of stealing something on March 5th so then you know A should have been called in for questioning right but A wasn't called in for questioning so this is the assumption that we are finally this is something this is the missing link that hasn't been said here if I say A is suspected of stealing an impressive painting from the Vatican on March 5th let's put put these answer choices back in A, A is suspected of stealing an impressive painting from the Vatican on March 5th but you know uh, someone had given a description of the thief which matched A's but A was in Paris on the 5th of March and so A was still A was not called in for questioning okay seems to be right 
right? Then I say A is suspected of stealing an impressive painting from the Vatican on 5th of March, March 5th. A wasn't even in Europe, you know, someone had given a description, but A wasn't even in Europe. So A was still, A was not called in for questioning, right? The third one, A wasn't in the Vatican on the 5th of March. You know? A is suspected, but A wasn't in the Vatican. You know, wasn't even in Europe is also strong. Wasn't in this. We go with not the kind of, we go with yes. So this answer choice is the correct one. What we are trying to say is he wasn't in the Vatican. I mean, no matter, I mean, if he was in Europe, like that would hurt his credibility. Maybe he just flew to some other part of Europe. Maybe he's, he was in, you know, on an American continent. South America, North America, somewhere. This works. I mean, this is just a really bad example, but what you should generally get a sense of what our favorite technique really is all about. You know? Okay. So finally we come back to our own uh, thing, what we had discussed in the beginning. How do you do something like this? How do you apply, apply the sleepy syndrome technique? Okay. Why do you want to apply it? Because you want to be lazy, you don't want to waste time, you want to use the best technique there is. So the best technique there is cannot be defined by anybody else but you. Okay, that is why you need to follow these steps every time when you want to improve in something. First, research in the area you want to improve in. For example, if I wanted to improve in RC primary purpose questions, I would go and find uh, everything related to that topic on forums, on YouTube, in books, etc. Once that happens, I've got all the resources. I, you know, test those strategies out. Once I test those strategies out, you know, you find the fastest, easiest way to solve the primary purpose questions, let's say, uh, or whatever you're looking for. Okay, you test the strategies out, find the fastest way, and then the most important step to apply the techniques that work for you. For you which are faster and easier to practice questions and practice tests okay that is the that's the whole gist of what we did today and it was extremely important this sleepy syndrome technique the laziness that you need to bring into your GMAT test taking that's extremely important because what that will do to, for you is it will save time and energy save time save energy you know so you can use that energy to solve tougher problems okay solve tougher problems you know basically what it means is you have mental energy you can only use uh, that mental energy for n number of things okay so what you are really doing is reducing the reducing the um, number of decisions you need to make while taking the test. The lesser the number of decisions you need to take 
the higher your score will be and that is why once you mastered something it becomes easier to do it you do it faster right so that is the whole idea you reduce the number of decisions so that your mind does not get boggled at the end of four hours you know when the fourth hour when the third hour starts your mind really stops working if you just you know if you try to do everything by brute force do not do that use this technique i have given you one of the best techniques that i mean if i had this technique with me earlier you know i would have really you know, scored higher faster okay i did score high but had to learn you know the hard way don't do that use this technique and you will do great okay so that is all for today thank you very much for watching this video